Winter coming in, that means one thing for me, firewood season. Routine maintenance on a WC-88 chamber. This is the only real big complaint I have about it, and it's really not a complaint. Getting a lot of rust on the bolts that they provide. A little bit in here. The paint's starting to peel right in here. Don't think you could see it. Rust, rust. But because I don't have an outside building yet, I really can't complain too much. So let's get this opened up. You have to forgive me, I'm kind of doing this one-handed. This, this adjusts your chute. And the last time when this thing sat for a while and I started it up, I actually had a bird nesting in the chute. Poor little guy didn't have a chance. I'm gonna try this. Here's the flywheel. 120 pounds, I think they said. Ah, uh, there's another one. Jesus. Four belts. <clears throat> now I am gonna make a suggestion here. Anybody, oh, look at you. Hey, that thing. Damn wasp. Uh, anybody, if anybody orders one of these, get the spare belts. Now, the original belts, um, they didn't last but maybe a month, maybe a month and a half. I adjusted them, you know, I tightened them up. They would just, they would squeal a lot and they seem to be, to me, different sizes. That's what it seemed like. But I put the spare belts on it, and these been on here for two years. Now, I've owned this two years uh, this past October. And let me tell you, I use the crap out of this thing. Uh, you came here to see the maintenance, and I listen to me babble. The grease fittings have caps on them, which is nice. So you have one grease fitting on each carrier bearing. They're pretty hefty bearings. Um, I think total, let me see, my dump trailer is six foot by 12 foot. And since I made the last video on this, Depending on which channel I put this on. Um, I've gotten, filled that dump trailer up probably about 15 times. And so it's six by 12 by two and a half foot high, roughly. And I had a pretty good mound in it. Now that wasn't topped up to the corners and everything else, but it had a pretty good amount in it. Okay. So, grease fitting, carrier bearing, grease fitting, carrier bearing. We got to do the uh, um, PTO shaft. There's one on this front carrier bearing. Down in here. They couldn't make that a little more difficult to get to. 
That's uh, on the on the PTO shaft, which runs a pump. Now that's the that's the one other thing, and I'll tell you things I don't like about it as I go through it. Rust is a big thing, the paint peeling. But I mean, it's been sitting outside for a while, so I really, I honestly, I can't complain because we've had wet seasons. All right, I figured we'd do it the easy way. And for all you tool, tool Nazis out there, yeah, I know, that's not an impact. It's a Craftsman, it's guaranteed for life. Uh, six millimeter Allen and 17 millimeter socket, if it'll take it off. Didn't take it all the way off. I'll take it all, all the way off by hand because I don't want to drop it into the into the well. And then I got to go try to get a magnet out and dig it out with a 120 pound steel flywheel. Got the blade up in the vise. It, it's semi dull, but it's got nicks in it. A couple little nicks, nothing bad. It actually probably doesn't even really need to be sharpened, but I'm going to do it anyway. First, I'm going to try it with the grinder. <laughs> Because that's normally how I sharpen lawnmower blades and every, you know all my other blades. So I'm going to try with that. If that doesn't work, I already got this set up. And we'll do it with that. So let's see how it goes. Right. Not too, too bad. Still got a couple little nicks in it right in here. Which is where I'm assuming that when the feeder pushes it in is where it hits because that's getting the most wire. So let me just clean this up. Then we'll try this anyway. Got that one pretty good. It's sharp. Got my finger already. Let's try the bench grinder and see how that does. much prettier it's definitely got a better grind to it yeah I think we'll go with the bench grinder I'm back <laughs> not that you even knew I left if anybody even watches this so all right Blades are all sharp. And now we'll put them back on. How many of you want to watch this? Probably none. And I can't say that I blame you. Boy, I'll tell you what, man. I laid my... when The one I did with the hand grinder, I laid my finger open pretty good. <laughs> it bled for a while yesterday. All right, so I'll get these on, and uh, then I want to just talk about the chipper just a little bit, and then I'll sit there and edit this stuff, and we'll be done. Now, in case you're wondering, these are Craftsmen. These are Craftsmen when Craftsmen was good. I don't know what they're like now. These ones are from the 80s. Oh, man, what did I do with that? And uh, I think those are probably the last of the good ones. Now I got to try to remember what I did with that. Six millimeter Allen key. There it is. 
And this is why I tell people don't ever get old. All right. I know anybody that wants to see me sitting there is turning this, so I will be back when I'm done. So now we have to adjust the anvil. If it needs it, it, might, it probably don't. And I don't know if you're going to say it. See right down there. There's that little piece of metal right there that sticks out. That is attached to this right here. That's the back plane of the anvil. So what we do is we gotta get each blade around to it. And you need between like a sixteenth and an eighth inch. You don't want them too big, too wide, because then it'll grab too much of the branch and try to, you know, it'll break something. So you want that small, but not touching. You want it close, but not touching. So that blade's good. So the anvil is good. So we're greased. One fitting on a roller bearing, one fitting on a carrier bearing. The other two, one is right there. And then the other one's down on the drive on the drive shaft for the bearing. That's all of the grease points.